Francisco. Thank you, Sandeep. And first of all, congratulations for one more episode of this always thrilling Clash of Titans. It is my great honor to have our always welcomed Presidenta Graciela Zucchero as co-moderator of this session. Graciela really represents the very essence, the very soul of ISPN, all, our, our always, our, our team of wonderful girls that are members of this vibrant society. So I think that Graciela has everything to do with the, team, with the team you are debating now. Now I will ask you, Graciela, to introduce your two titans, Martina okay. and Nelsie, both of them are very good friends of mine for a long time. So don't be afraid. I won't be biased. So, <laughs> Graciela, please go on. Thank you, Francisco. Well, good morning, everybody. It is really an honor to be moderator of Clash of the Titan episode 10. I would like to thank Sandeep and Nelsi for the invitation. Today, we have a very interesting topic. Speaking from my experience as a neurosurgeon in Argentina, I never, never had advantages, disadvantages, but I am aware that in many societies around the world, women are discriminated, but not only for being neurosurgeon, but also for being women. Today, we have two successful neurosurgeons that happen, they are female. Okay, I would like to introduce my two great, great friends, Nelson and Martina. Dr. Nelson is pediatric neurosurgeon in the Federal University of San Pablo. She is chairman of Pediatric Neurosurgical Committee of the World Federation, chairwin of the Brazilian Society of Neurosurgeons, vice chair of the Education Committee of ISPN, president elect of the Brazilian Association of Women Doctors. Professor Martina Messinger Jenger is head of the first German Department of Pediatric Neurosurgery at the Asclepio Children's Hospital in San Agustin director of surgical center at this hospital, professor of neurosurgery at the Userful University, former ESPN president, chair of the liaison committee of the ISPN, member of German Academy of Neurosurgery, member of the executive board of the German Neurosurgical Society. Nelsie, you start. Yes, I can. Thank you very much. I will share my screen right now. Hi, everyone. Uh, first of all, I'm afraid of my debater. Martina, thanks very much, uh, Sandeep, to give this very difficult task. But uh, we will do our best. My uh, duty now is women are in disadvantage on pediatric neurosurgery. And my answer is, of course, yes. And uh, the battle between yeah, gods and yes. titans. Are you uh, listening very well? OK. Yep. Uh, the battle between God and Titans, uh, Zeus against Cronus, uh, the winner was uh, Zeus. He became supreme sovereign god of Olympus. And what and where is our Olympus like a neurosurgeon, women in neurosurgery? Uh, operating room teaching uh, 
learning, meetings, leadership, taking care of patients, it's our Olympus. And what information I will try to give you to answer these questions. Humanity history, perception, and uh, on the neurosurgical field. Just to have an idea, uh, since we know probably the first uh, medical meeting was uh, made by women in 1919. Why? Because they was in the war, but when they come back, they decide to organize themselves because in the war they was not doctors, they were only soldiers less than doctors and the men in the war all uh, at the same time, uh, men and doctors. And I start just studying or learning and teaching about the subject when a Concesso di Rocco invited me in 2011 uh, to write something about women in neurosurgery because at that time our pediatric neurosurgical team was only uh, women in uh, our department. And since then, I got the privilege to meet the leaders around the world, especially Yoko Kato from Japan, Lin Feng from China, Soad Bakit from Argelia, uh, Nadia El Abadi from uh, Morocco, and Gay Rousseau from the United States. And uh, on the Flag World Federation, we met each other uh, time to time, more than once a year. And just to have an idea about women in neurosurgery, the first woman uh, between neurosurgeons was uh, Louise Eisenhardt, probably the first neuropathologist. And she helped yeah, him to be uh, the best uh, work that uh, he could do. And uh, this year, just coming up in Journal of Neurosurgery, 100 years in neurosurgery, contribu contributions of American women. And they uh, show up that uh, some obstacles for the neurosurgical practice in women, uh, stress three of them, lack of mentorship and role models, systemic barriers that make pregnancy and childbearing difficult or impossible, and frequent sexism among colleagues, and also some institutional bias and daily microaggressions. And just to have an idea, it's not only in neurosurgical field. We see in science in 2018, uh, they show unequal access to education, conscious or unconscious discrimination in promotion founding, peer review, citations, and unequal pay in research also. Probably explain why only 30% of the professional research are women now. And to have an idea in COVID-19, uh, the women just decreased 60% of the publications and probably is related in child had care responsibility in one issue, and maybe the women are more likely than men to take care of their relatives also. This is a real fact, is not uh, uh, something, uh, uh, something uh, on the books, on the, on the paper, is real cases. Uh, Graciela, can I ask you just to switch off your mic, maybe your microphone? Okay. Uh, the classic questions we see in Latin America about women in neurosurgery uh, is real questions uh, that made for uh, the boss to the women that need uh, to do the exams to go in uh, neurosurgery. Just an example. What do you do if you have a cockroach in the operating room? Uh, do you intend to get married, have a children? What do you do if you were with colic and had to do a decompressive connectomy in the midnight? And why don't you do another specialty, dermatopediatrics? Neurosurgery is not for a woman. Did you like surgery more than a piano? Are you bringing the piano in the operating room? And the other, I did not see neurosurgery discipline in your CV. Where did you see uh, about neurosurgery? It's only the questions I raised in 10 minutes asking the women about the questions they were submitted when they applied to be a neurosurgeon in Latin America. 
And this is a toxic environment, is a bullying at work. We need to stop not for women, but for the human being, humankind. It is not polite to have this kind of behavior today. Uh, bullying and human being is not privileged uh, operating room or medical field. We need to educate our children and try if this, they don't, doesn't learn, maybe have some kind of punishment to, to teach them. Hostile work environment, we know very well in the hospitals. Probably each one of us see or listen about uh, these subjects uh, doing some uh, pressure uh, with the men and also women uh, can happen with both of them. And uh, I love this uh, statement uh, that Martin, Martin Luther King says. Uh, what worries me is not the few bad guys, but the silence of many good guys. And we don't need to silence if there is something wrong that we can try to help and to teach and uh, to get bad, uh, best environment. This data is not official data in neurosurgery, but it was just uh, last year. Several residents asked to move to another department claiming for another question when in reality they were living in a toxic environment. Maybe it's time to, uh, to raise this subject in our uh, meetings. But do we have prepared team to work on this subject? Uh, not sure, because it's not usual to, to, to talk about. And in other continent last year too, a colleague neurosurgeon stayed for two years ignored and without salary. Fortunately, other departments bring her to be the best pediatric neurosurgical training in the last five years. But it's just real situation. I'm, I'm not creating this situation. Just to, to try to understand the human behavior. 10,000 years ago, the nature, the women, the water, the trees, it was something uh, sacred. It was uh, uh, real spiritual, but we move for some reason uh, to a materialistic world most competitive than collaborative work. Maybe it's time to step back and try to see how, how we can do better. The human being need to learn spirituality vision of the universe. We are not by ourselves. We need help when we are not in the right way. Just to have an idea, it's what neurosurgery is not uh, only historical paper. There is some correlation between mythology and neurosurgery. Probably the majority of us are not aware about this subject. Just an example, Asclepius holding the staff with the snake wrapped around remained a symbol of medicine until today. In the right side, uh, Achilles is dressing the wound of his best friend Patroclus, injured on the Trojan War. The Trojan War was meat since some researchers find the staff's correlation and became into reality. And we are talking about archetypes. The central concepts of science and philosophy and ethics are not exception on these rules. And the definition of archetypes in Karl Luang. What is derived from Greek words, arch, with mean first principle, tupos, that translate as impression. And Apollo and Artemis, Artemis is the same than Diana, son of uh, Zeus, are uh, brothers. And the origin of these archetypes are the subjects that these models are inanimate, universal, and hereditary. How the most powerful ideas in history goes back to archetypes. And Diana is a very strong archetype is the Artemis as a goddess of hunt of the moon and personification of independent feminine spirit. 
And Diana probably is the archetype for many professionals uh, and probably the surgeons also. But uh, we see here some examples that uh, the professional are challenging and doing uh, the impossible to possible. And in science also, we have this archetype, just a woman coming out for uh, the, by herself between a lot of uh, challenging questions. And this came out to reality to uh, women in economical society, just to have an idea, one US dollar venture invests in female lead versus 40 uh, with male owned is just on one example. Come back to Diana and Artemis. Diana is the Roman version and Artemis is the Greek uh, version. The ability to focus, uh, set goals and reach them, autonomy, independence, ability to develop meaningful connection with other women is below uh, Diana archetypes. Maybe the most example we have, the modern, modern Artemis uh, archetypes is Jenny Godal, a three decades spent with uh, the animals and nature in Tanzania. But we have a lot of books, movies, fictional series showing that the women with indomitable spirit are the new protagonist in the world now. It's time to have women in neurosurgery. Just an example, Giselle won the uh, Young Neurosurgeon Award a few years ago by uh, the, the World Federation. And where is the pediatric neurosurgeon in the Olympus? If we have all the subspeciality in neurosurgery, maybe Hermes is the pediatric neurosurgeon like we see here. And why Hermes? Because probably is one of the most popular gods in the classical antiquity. Be between the 12, uh, Hermes is maybe the most charming of them. And probably in pediatric neurosurgeon, we have the most popular also when we compare with the other subspeciality. And here we have three of examples that you know very well. Uh, in our uh, history of pediatric neurosurgery. But we can also learn for the primitive pharaohs living with God. And the pharaohs was the first human governor in the herd. And 3000 years before Christ uh, stay uh, in there. And to have an idea about the time Cleopatra, it was uh, really before this time. And the ancient Egypt, the, image, the image of royal family, the royal power uh, came for siblings. It was transmitted by blood to be sure that uh, keep in the uh, God uh, connection. And who was Hatsiput? Why I bring her on the stage with us today? Uh, she was born in 1500 before Christ. Uh, she was the daughter of the Queen Amos and Tamsas I. And uh, she, when she was only 12 years old, uh, his father died and uh, she uh, got married with his brother and became regent, contemplate uh, post pharaoh. And at that time it was not official role for a queen to uh, represent and they found a way to represent uh, when they know at that time. The fact that she was a woman was never hidden, hidden. And the following classic symbolism in the monarchy, the double crown and the beard was skipped for making her look like a man. And she do very well uh, and bring prosperity to Egypt. Uh, she uh, worked for 22 years. And on this period, uh, much has been tried to erase this credit for his legacy. But the popularity of the pharaoh was so high that it was impossible. And you can visit Hatsheput Temple in Luxor, Egypt. It's open. And Hatsheput is uh, this figure. It's uh, maybe uh, so relevant like it was Cleopatra, but probably uh, less people know his history. And he teaches us about the qualities of the leadership. 
is a practical skill, the ability an individual to lead and guide the other individuals. And not only in the society, but in the surgery, uh, the surgery also, uh, what uh, the leader are looking for. The financial independence, to choosing to be challenging, many hours working, less leap than other professionals in surgery, less food and self-esteem. And in, just to have an idea, quite, quite actual is this team. In these days, women in surgery mentoring, it's uh, uh, worth looking for in the website uh, these days. And uh, for the next year, we will have a special issue in neurosurgical focus, international women leaders in neurosurgery, past, present, and future. I have the privilege to be between these stars it's really uh, something that I uh, never uh, dreams about, but just come true. The gender equality is a quali qualitative indicator for one country progress and development. It's not only a question of leadership, it's a question of progress. In the medical career, we see uh, all the countries represent here. Most of them are between 20 and 74 women in medical school. And the Brazil are almost achieving 50%. Just to have an idea, the winning Latino America work we are doing together online in the last months is uh, quite uh, a big learning and big challenging for me. Uh, and sure, we are different when we are preparing the lecture. The men usually have this office clean and working by himself, and the women need to take care for the family, for the kids, for the other staffs at the same time that they need to prepare with his laptop. And uh, coming back to ISPN, we are actually uh, 493 members. Between them, I have the, pr the privilege to announce you, the Brazil are now the uh, top two members. Uh, Professor Salomão is the president, is the Brazilian one, and uh, was my professor when I was a resident. And just to have an idea, we uh, know yesterday that women in ISPN, we are 60%. And congratulations to Shanda and uh, Shlomi. They are doing very, very good job in the membership committee. We got the privilege to have one woman between the 44th past president, Graziela Zuccaro. She win uh, after several years, and uh, we are proud uh, to have her between us. And Zuma Tovar write a paper in uh, and publish ISPN, the first lady in the Poncho ceremony and the ISPN presidency. Uh, we need to acknowledge also Mami Yamazaki. She was committee chair in ethics and morals, and she died just uh, after offering uh, to us the probably one of the most beautiful uh, ISPN meetings in Kobe. And World Federation doesn't have until now the president of women, but we have probably a candidate for the next election. election. And we have an ebook on the World Federation website to encourage the girls uh, to come to uh, the neurosurgery like a dream. And to be a neurosurgeon in Brazil, we start working beyond uh, 30 years old. In Nigeria, uh, they need more years, maybe 35 or 40 years. It's very, very long career. And become a mother on between is really a challenge. It's possible, but uh, we need to think about it and have a plan. Just uh, a summary in systemic bias, conscious or non-conscious, we have lack of specific and systematic focus on recruiting, retarding, and developing women leaders. Persistent aging gap challenging for women resulting in lucky uh, pipeline for alternative careers options and few visible role models in the boardroom. 
And uh, family is important support. Sometimes it's mandatory if we have uh, still uh, have full time commitment and try to find out in the hospital workplace, maybe uh, more prepared to have women leaders. You can see beyond, beyond the animals in the brain. Uh, it's for Sandeep, it's to, for, for you. We can only see the iron here, but we can open eyes and try to see more than we are seeing like you. Inspiring the new generation is part of our role and uh, for my surprise, uh, the young generation are doing webinars with medical students in Brazil with 5,000 regist registration in a week. It's uh, quite a huge achievement for them. We need to open mind and packing meeting meets. Women take time to have kids and this limit their time to met leadership is not true. Women are unsupportive to other women is not true. Women are bad at the negotiation. It's only a myth. And how we can do better to improve? We must uh, now focus on continu uh, continuous system improvement, welcome environment for all uh, aspiring neurosurgeons, Try to eliminate harassment, equal and fair remuneration, parent leave on site and daycare facility for them. In summary, promote a safe and inclusive workplace for everyone, create workplace policy, and the leaders can be more protective and aware to everyone. And uh, Zuma Tovar are doing this gender disparity in neurosurgery. Maybe we try to uh, raise other obstacles that we didn't uh, uh, mention now. And the final provocation, I love this statement. If you want something said, ask for a man. If you want something done, ask for a woman. And my mentors are all men. I am proud of them. Uh, Professor Ricardo Matana from Caxias do Sul. Uh, Lynch, it was the chief one uh, when I was medical uh, resident and uh, pediatric neurosurgery in France with Schuchs. If we have two more minutes, we have a small uh, video. If you don't have uh, any against, Try to see the invisible players and explain a lot what I think. It's uh, they invited sports fans to the without the knowledge. Who scored this goal? And they would try to guess because they are expert on the subject. If you are not, no problem. But uh, who did this goal? Who bring this? I couldn't imagine that was a woman. There is a blockage. If you think athletes, it's men. I don't talk about any woman. It was beautiful. What I expected. You know about sport, but if you didn't guess the answers, probably you need to learn more about power of the woman. And uh, the invisible players can be also in the operating room, can be in the meetings, and probably we doesn't see uh, them. Or maybe we doesn't want to see. And thank you for your attention and the Buddha statement. What do you think you create? What do you feel you attract? What you believe become reality? I hope every one of us can be better after today. Thank you very much.
Graciela? Or maybe you can continue. Thank you for your nice presentation. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> we are supporting Excellent you presentation, Elsie. Thank you. Now, Martina. Yes. First, I have to upload. Okay. Well. Okay. So. Um, first of all, I would like to thank Graciela for being with us and also Francisco and uh, ISPN and Sandeep for giving us um, the opportunity. And uh, Nelsi, thank you that you showed all the historical background and also um, the nowadays situation of females, which is still uh, a big thing um, to talk about and to improve, of course. But um, our task was to talk about this advantage in pediatric neurosurgery. And this is what I was sticking very, very closely at because uh, I think um, it is a different world, pediatric neurosurgery. I would like to show you why. So you said that women are at disadvantage in pediatric neurosurgery, and I say no. And uh, I would like to show you why. Um, first of all, I would like to make a distinction between disparity and disadvantage. Disparity means just that we are less females than males, and um, this is only a figure and uh, statistics, and disadvantage means that um, there is a purpose to uh, have a larger representation, but you cannot, and I think these are two different things. And disparity is existing in pediatric neurosurgery uh, in respect of the gender distribution, of course, but I do not feel a real disadvantage for us females. It is true that not more than 5% of all board certified neurosurgeons in the world are female. There are some places where there are no females at all and others uh, with more fair, um, numbers up to 20%, like in Europe, for example. And um, luckily, the numbers of females in neurosurgery, but especially in pediatric neurosurgery, is steadily increasing. Probably because already things are working uh, that you are proposing. What could be the reasons? You were giving uh, lots of backgrounds for this male networks and closed shops. Are they still existing when they are dealing with their attractive jobs, operation schedules, science and academics, and then finally in after work socializing, um, celebrating their own deals? Yes, probably this is existing, but I don't think this is the major world in pediatric neurosurgery. Of course, there are other reasons you were showing perfectly before, Nelsie. Pregnancy at work. Pregnancy at work is um, a, a clear disadvantage um, females are uh, living with, but this is inborn, this is biological, and we have to arrange with this and find ways how to work. And um, I think we have made improvements, uh, improvements in the last decades, definitely. Family planning and taking the burden of a family. Um, this is, of course, a big topic also for pediatric neurosurgeons. But I can tell you that in advanced societies, and this is a very important topic, especially nowadays, where our democratic life is uh, a little bit shaky, um, in good social communities, we can see more and more men looking for uh, met, um, family leave, uh, educational leave, I would say <laughs> for um, um, maternity leave is not true, but paternity leaves. Nowadays in our country, we see that um, 30 to 40% of, uh, of the males, even in the hospitals in surgical fields, um, are also taking a few months off uh, when a baby um, is in the family. So there are changes and we have to talk about these changes because any example that has been made has to be talked about. And this is also true for social cultural barriers. Of course, 
social culture barriers can um, hinder females uh, becoming a full working uh, mother. Yeah, but the mother herself and the female herself has to fight for it. And then, of course, we have to ask ourselves, what about me? What is my personal career definition and life planning? Probably do I have a lack of courage? I have to be very honest with me and also to try to start changing myself. And what about the gender specific reasons, the evolu uh, evolutionary ones? Um, are they applicable to me? What about the different value systems? My self perception, what is my personal meaning of success and salary? What do I want to fight for? And what do I stand for? And this also leads us to the question, am I ready to fight and finally win? Or am I ready to serve? This is the philosophy I have to bring to my life by myself. When um, Shelley Timmons finally became the first female neurosurgeon president of the WNS, lots of communications have been written before and afterwards until now. And um, they were stating that um, the fact that there are so few females in neurosurgery, there is not enough power for them to change the environment. Um, yeah, probably in the wider field of neurosurgery, this is still not easy, but I think in pediatric neurosurgery, it's much easier. So what are the best strategies to overcome gender disparity? Communication, creating awareness, female network working and mentorship, defining own goals and also fighting for them, and with this changing the working conditions. It is true that pediatric neurosurgery is preferred by women, um, but I am asking myself, why are we not better organized for this idea? Looking at the ISPN, you have shown this already. There was one female president in the past, which has been Graciela, and actually 10 out of 28 committee members are female and zero officers. In ESPN, it's more or less the same. One female president in the past and two out of six executive board members are women and only one out of 20 committee members. So there is lots of space for us. Just come in because the societies representing us are female friendly, and I, I say this really from the bottom of my heart because this is what I always felt. There are fostering women in pediatric neurosurgery in respect of education and training, organization, and also role model function and mentoring. Look at the postgraduate courses offered by these societies. In all the courses, we have no gender in the uh, um, this equilibrium. So all of them can choose to come there and can increase their knowledge and can network. And it is accepted by lots of females around the world. And the societies actively invite women to work for the societies and their support female leadership. But we must be there and we must offer ourselves. Pediatric neurosurgery is less competitive and needs much more doctors, and especially female doctors, to meet the needs of all the kids around the world. And it is a small community and it has no communication barriers. And I think this is a very good background and it is different from the global world and also from other surgical specialties. Since what I'm telling you is, cannot be proven academically, I just want to show you um, photographs I was looking for um, just randomly. Uh, and I found that there is a new picture of um, pediatric neurosurgery. Um, and this picture is quite female. Look at these um, photograph taken um, by the boat event on the ESPN 2018 in Bonn. All these uh, 
female neurosurgeons, look, many of them, not spouses, these are all colleagues. Look, it's amazing. This nice lady is not a neurosurgeon, she's working in another field. And um, a female neurosurgeon does not need to make a choice between profession and family because we cannot have a choice. When we are a woman, we want eventually become a mother, and that's a fact. We cannot run away from this, but we also can have the chance and we also have the right to have a fulfillment in our profession. And this is also possible in pediatric neurosurgery. If I really want to become a pediatric neurosurgeon and to have a family, I can do it. Yes, there are lots of examples nowadays because success follows commitment. And actually, I don't know whom I should blame that I probably want to follow a double commitment. I feel in many times in my life better compared to my husband, because I so often had better situations and a better um, communication with my kids as well. I had a better feeling in my professional life because I was um, very well um, accepted by my community. And although it was lots of work, but nobody tells you that life should be without work. So this is not, um, the biggest problem to me to combine family and profession. Because we have to believe in ourselves, this is giving us lots of strength. And if you look at this picture taken at the Clanpet 2019 in Costa Rica, all these ladies are mothers. And two of them became president of their organizations. So we have fulfillment of our commitments. And don't be afraid of men. It's just a joke. Sandeep, don't laugh about this. And be a role model for your young colleagues because then they know not only men are sportive or surgical, but also females. And also inspire your kids. You can be mother and daughter and at the same time, teacher and trainee in neurosurgery. And one day they will be better than us because nowadays we still have to be more competitive also in the academic field. We have to dare to be there and we have to claim there that we are important as well. So for example, when they used the age index in order to um, describe a, probably, a probable sex bias or gender problem they were unable to do because females are that much underrepresented that the age index cannot be used to um, find out whether there is a kind of um, citation bias between the genders and so on. So, but this is uh, up to us to change this. But we started already. We started already, as you can see here in Brazil, the first textbook in pediatric neurosurgery has been edited only by females. And we did the same in Germany. The only male name here uh, was a neuropediatrician. The rest has been done by the females. And be a networker. We are already networkers. And therefore, I'm very positive about the female thing in pediatric neurosurgery. We are supposed to fight for our goals instead of arranging the given situations. And we will be successful when we are fully dedicated and committed. And I show you that this recipe is successful uh, with the German example. When Wolfgang Wagner has been president of the 41st annual meeting of the ISPN in Mainz, he presented his German pediatric neurosurgical colleagues as the family of pediatric neuros neurosurgery. You know, we still do not have uh, um, society in Germany, but obviously we do not need this kind of uh, organization structure. You can see a fair number of females in this group. And nowadays, 
four of us are directing a significant department. And even more are arriving in the meantime. And the same obviously is happening also in Brazil. If you see, and this is the principle of a good mother, if you see you have a mother who is inspiring, not only in the family, then she will gather other female colleagues around her. And this is the snowball principle, which is working in so many other uh, situations in life. It is all also working in pediatric neurosurgery. And I'm very happy because from the first time I met um, the pediatric neurosurgical community, I felt that this is inviting also me as a female. And therefore, I don't believe that we need a women only train. Thank you very much. Congratulations, Martina. Very nice presentation. Thank you. Francisco, Thank you me. have the questions? Okay. Thank you both, uh, Martina and Nelsie for their insightful uh, presentations. I have loved so much, although the point of view were sometimes opposed. But firstly, I would like to I would like to know for you both that in case of disadvantage, of in case of unfairness in relation to women, what should one, what should ISPN specifically, as an organized society, to do to, to refrain, to, to change this situation? That's my question. After this, I will put the presentations in discussion. Thanks, Salomo. Uh, it's a very difficult question. Probably you don't have the answer, but I agree with Martina. Probably pediatric neurosurgery uh, is uh, the society that uh, who are more uh, humble people, more easygoing, more friendly uh, than uh, other society I know and I work with it. Uh, but probably uh, if we see the problem, uh, the question is how we deal with it. For example, I don't have the experience on pediatric neurosurgery specifically, but I have a lot of experience in uh, neurosurgery because uh, the women in neurosurgery in Brazil, we are now almost 200. And you can uh, imagine uh, how many situations we uh, listen about. I think we need to try to find the balance because when you show up, some situation that is embarrassing for the women, specifically if she is young, we are giving her a task and we giving her some more difficulty in the future. And uh, we try to solve when the problem came out individually and uh, talking with uh, the involved involved people in a harmonic way and uh, with uh, some kind of arrangement, try to don't uh, put on the society. But specifically, if we have some big issue, uh, it's difficult how you can raise, for example, you know, uh, in some uh, departments that the residents are treated like uh, two centuries ago and uh, they try to steal, they try to move with uh, individual perception. But how you, you can show up this uh, subjective situation? If you have some recording you are doing without permission is forbidden. If you have some pictures without permission is uh, uh, not legal. Uh, I think uh, 
it's better don't have this situation to manage but i would like to listen uh, about uh, the thoughts of martina probably she uh, have different ideas about the subject um yeah again i would like to stress that i see that um, females can be at a disadvantage in general because uh, of some male attitudes um, to show that they are superior or they just want to play with females. But um, actually, I, I feel um, it is not very likely in our community. Um, but, you know, I have not worked everywhere in the world, but I have met lots of people, um, colleagues, around the world and I cannot imagine that uh, in our community uh, that this is a all day uh, problem. But in general, um, I share with you the concerns that um, when men in public can be like this and I just look uh, at some presidents of the world, um, how they are addressing females in public um, some men might be invited um, to be just the same because this is a kind of legislation. If a big guy is doing it, I also am allowed to do it. And I think since in many respects, um, females are in better positions, um, the male um, community feels um, in danger and then they are probably more likely to be... Um, to, to show harassment or to be quite ugly. So there might be a social problem and I think it is getting worse in some respects and in other respects it's getting better. So we will have a polarization. Um, what we can do is um, creating awareness like the Me Too debate did. I personally uh, had a problem with the Me Too debate because it's always also um, not easy to prove and uh, it can also be um, misused by females so i think um, to make um, these situations public it's a problem um, but to, to come back to our community in the hospitals in our um, pediatric environment i think we are in a better condition so I could always see differences between pediatric hospitals and general hospitals, between pediatric medicine and um, adult medicine. So probably I would give the co young colleagues working together with us uh, the advice to try to move to another environment um, to become powerful. Um, because it does not make sense, I think, uh, to, to talk to another authority and then to blame this department. And that, because then we have, for example, the problem to prove, to prove what really happened. If you see that the environment is a problem in the adult um, world, then you should move to the pediatric world. This is, it was one of the reasons why I rescheduled my career not because I had a problem with the male colleagues, but I found in general um, the way people were talking to each other, dealing with each other was too rough. It was not very civilized, even not here in Europe for my feeling. So I decided actively to move to the pediatric uh, environment to do my job. And um, there I never met any any problems like this. Thank you, Martina. Graciela, do you want to add something to this? I am I am more I am more, I am harder because I work with adults but I always maintain my position between men and between women. You know, I don't agree that there is a society for humans, society for men. No, 
the only society of neurosurgeons in general. I, I, I never agree. had problem. I never had problem, neither in pediatric neurosurgery nor adult neurosurgery. The I think that you have to be serious. You have to be professional. And you have to work harder, harder, harder. This is my opinion, you know. Yeah, Graciela, I'm completely agreeing with your position. And uh, I'm still also engaged uh, in the organization of adult neurosurgery. And I worked there for 20 years. And I had my leading position there as well. But actually, sometimes I thought, hmm, there can be other ways to work together, to communicate. And if I could rule everything, I would uh, change some of it. Because uh, as the, the last uh, citation, Nelsie showed us um, that if you want to have the thing done, ask the women, the Thatcher word. Um, and if you want to listen to a word, ask a man. This is true. And this is probably also something you were um, experiencing that, uh, of course, the world is not black and white. Yeah, um, We had female colleagues that were not uh, um, doing what was expected from them, the same as male and the other way around. So actually working um, as a surgeon is independent from being female or male. You have to do the best thing with the best skills you can take out of yourself. I completely agree. But um, I have to admit that the tone, the tone is better in the pediatric uh, environment compared to the adult environment. But this has nothing to do with you. If you are a fighter, you will win also there, no problem. I you understand you. very well, uh, Graciela. I understand. But I disagree completely. I was thinking like you when I was uh, since maybe 15 years ago, when they invite me to create uh, the women's session in Brazilian society, my first answers were no, uh, we don't need. Uh, I was a leader uh, already, I doesn't need. But since we stopped just a little to listen, uh, the young people and to listen to the others, we can see that if we are together, we have more free speech, we can uh, do something for them. And we can, just an example, just an example we did in the last 10 years. One example, I was always invited to be a scientific chair and invite people to talk. Usually we repeat all the same names forever. It's like a statement. And when we start, listen and see the others work, doesn't matter if you men or women, but it's different, it's outside our day by day. We can change the reality and showing up uh, but for the better position, uh, the most uh, placed people that are doing very well. And some, sometimes in the huge society with a lot of problems, this can be uh, hidden and uh, doesn't appear. And uh, I changed my mind. And uh, just uh, when we was in Africa several times for the World Federation, in the table during the lunchtime, uh, I asked for the young generation uh, what was the first problem they would like to raise up. It was four or five years ago. And they tell us, uh, we feel that, that we are excluded from the uh, neurosurgical field for the meetings. We are invisible. And we create a WhatsApp group for these people. And now we are in the second one. We are more than 300 women in neurosurgery. What we do, we share papers, we share books, we share information, we help if you can, we receive each other. It's uh, a kind of uh, work you can do uh, besides your regular uh, task. And uh, only for women, no, for the new generation, I think we need to do better. And probably they are doing already. Thank you. Thank you. I have here one question. 
for a female colleague of us to both the speakers. She asked if you have in any time faced any discrimination on basis of sex during appointment to a job. Uh, no, in my case specifically, uh, I see with other uh, colleagues, for example, one of them, it was true in one of the pictures, uh, she was the first place on the residence training, the first exam, uh, it was the best score, and uh, in the interview they tell her, uh, yes, you are the first, but no women in our department, and 20 years after this event, the chief met her, a very good spine surgeon, doing very well, modern and well, uh, successful uh, neurosurgeon. And he tell her, apologize. I couldn't see at that time that a woman should win in this uh, field. It's just one example. We have a lot. But fortunately, uh, if I tell you that I was discriminated, uh, it's not true. I think I was a good fighter. Thank you. Well, you were you were very lucky, may I say. <laughs> to say. Yeah. So, uh, you had some very some very good mentors. I need <laughs> one of them. I myself consider <laughs> in part a mentor of you, and you had a brilliant, you are having a brilliant career. So, in face of what you say, what you said, maybe you you were more the exception than the rule, or maybe was it a, a, just a matter of of feeling at the in a due moment. Thank you, Solomon. Thank you very much. <laughs> So when, when I was um, applying for a neurosurgical residency nearly 35 years ago or something like this, um, the first interview I had um, was, and at that time there were um, 10 applications for one post. So it was quite competitive. Huh? Nowadays it's, uh, it's the other way around more or less. But uh, the first um, professor um, I met in my life uh, for um, finding a job, he told me, hello, Miss Messing, Mrs. Messing, um, you can become a resident with me and become a mother. I was completely uh, shocked because I did not um, uh, wait for, for such a expect such an open attitude so this was 35 years ago and uh, finally um, I got three appointments for an interview and I got three offers for a job afterwards which was quite unusual in a time where um, you had a one to ten um, ratio um, so I never personally had uh, the feeling that I was uh, in a bad, in a worse situation um, in the competition against men. So I was obviously quite lucky, and the same happened to me with my two um, professors that were fostering me and giving me leading positions, and they never um, withhold me from this OR schedule. And uh, also with my doctor father, <clears throat> he's, he has always been extremely supportive. Um, when I was studying, my father died and I was running out of money and he was providing me student, well-paid student jobs, two of them just in order to survive and without me asking him for this. So I got uh, lots of advantages, probably, because the same with you, Nelsi, um, and uh, Francisco, that people had an idea, okay, she's working without question. She's just doing it. Probably this is something what we are showing. We are probably not showing that we are doubtful about what we want to do. So I don't think <clears throat> that this is just a question of luck, because in my own 
experience, it happened um, everywhere. And some years ago, I have been asked um, to become chief of a major department uh, for general neurosurgery um, because our German society wanted more females in these positions. And I said, I actually, I don't think I want to become chief or university director of general neurosurgery because I don't believe in the system we are running here. I probably would prefer to have a smaller thing. I can create more. And this is a female attitude. We want not to follow old paths, but we want to create something. Thank you. We we'll have two more questions. May I talk? May I talk? Yes, please. Please. Okay. Excuse me. Many, 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 many years ago, about 42, I competed with 63 men for four, four places for neurosurgery. I was the second. I didn't have problem. I talked about 42 years ago, but I understand that as uh, Nelsie said, in some societies around the world, of course, women are uh, discriminated, but not only for to be neurosurgeons, but also for being uh, women. That is the problem of the different society. Thank you, Graciela. Very, very, very important statement. Now we have a question from Kinishi Nishayama. Thank you for the wonderful talks. As you know, guys cannot become a mother. Please give us some comments regarding a strong point in daily work of pediatric neurosurgery as a mother. Can you talk first, Martina? Yes. Yeah, you, you talk first. You. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, it's uh, always an issue, it's true. Uh, the spirituality of his comments, uh, the man can be pregnant, it's true. But uh, the pregnancy uh, also raises uh, boys and we need to create the support for having these trainees uh, on the group without uh, some troubles. Try to create opportunity uh, for them, if they uh, need parents leave, uh, just create the situation for don't stop residency training. Uh, we may need to think about uh, be out of comfort zone. Usually we stay strict, uh, we have rotation, we need to stay on need for this time, but uh, Thinking about maternity during tra trainees is possible. We have several examples here in Brazil, well successful mother uh, during residency and very comprehensive residence group uh, men that work on it. Just to tell you an example, Kenichi, like the, the questions are changing. The last year, a resident uh, man just asked me, he was rotating pediatric neurosurgery he tell me, Nelsie, uh, can I leave today because I would like to go with my uh, wife in uh, obstetrician consultation because we have some troubles. Uh, I couldn't imagine when I was training somebody asked me these questions and even for myself leave uh, for uh, see something outside the residency. I think we have more flexibility in the work now and is uh, I see with good eyes. Uh, thank you very much for your question, uh, Kenich. Kenichi, I understood your question like this. How uh, do we manage? Um, as mother and neurosurgeon. Probably um, you were also uh, meaning this. So when I was in residency and um, I had, uh, I was mother of uh, two children, I always decided to myself, not in order to be uh, in big trouble, family first. So um, that meant at that time we were not allowed to have uh, our uh, mobile phones in the OR but I always took the mobile phone with me uh, and I everybody allowed this because I said if 
something is wrong back home, they have to call me and I have to be there. I was fortunate that this was not happening. So I never had to interrupt anything I was doing um, because uh, we had a big family, three generation house and um, the kids were together with the rest of the family. On the other hand, when I um, became head of a, my own department, um, my two male co-workers at that time were more often than me out of the clinic because they had to care for their own children because both wives of them were also doctors and they shared the burden of the family. So, and of course I gave them uh, the leave and immediately they could go when they had a problem back home. So I think um, there are lots of uh, real time of, uh, of reality examples that both is uh, possible. Okay, Graciela, any comment? No, no, I agree with we all say. Yeah, it was it was said uh, during one of the presentations that there was a lack of female mentorship in pediatric neurosurgery. In my opinion, that's just a matter of having more brilliant female neurosurgeons like you. Do you want to add something to this? Any other, any other way to improve uh, female mentorship in pediatric neurosurgery other than stimulate women to proceed with pediatric neurosurgery? I think, uh, yes, uh, since we have more and more women in neurosurgery, uh, we are uh, doing the example and try to mentor them. Uh, they are uh, well organized now in the, the groups of women in medical uh, students that will love to do uh, neuroscience. And we try to help them to show our uh, way to live, way to work. And probably they will be uh, in an easy condition than we are today. Uh, I doesn't met any uh, surgeon woman since uh, I was in the pediatric neurosurgical training. And uh, it wasn't a problem for me uh, to go and uh, to still working. But I think it's important to, to give example and try to, to show that it's possible, yes. Uh, do you have to add something, uh, Martina? So actually, I think um, what I call the snowball principle in uh, my talk is the only real way um, we can um, attract more of our fellow females. Um, I actually am totally against any kind of, uh, of um, what is, I don't know the English word name in Germany, we say quoting, <laughs> quoting, so. Um, Quota, maybe. Yeah, so we, we, we should not say we need to have 30% of females in the executive board and, and each three years a female president. I think these things are counterproductive. But what is important is, um, and we would, I would like to address this to all our female audience <laughs> today, <laughs> um, that we have, you can believe, us and we have to show this that we can have a full happy life being mother and also being a dedicated pediatric neurosurgeon even being officers of uh, of uh, societies and um, yeah a kind of ambassador for our things um, it is a full life and you see my own daughter she was not every night and uh, every day with her mother, but nevertheless, obviously, she found a happy mother back home. Otherwise, she would not have chosen the same um, subject as me. So um, I think this is an example you have to show. And by this, um, the pediatric neurosurgery phase becomes also more female 
and this is better than looking at all statistics. And um, each year I am, or each semester, I am offering uh, a seminar, pediatric neurosurgery for students, which is quite an exotic little something, um, but you don't believe it. All the time, more than 10% of the whole semester inscribe especially for this uh, um, seminar, which has in the end um, a, uh, uh, an examination even. So they come there and about 80% are females. This is the normal um, um, distribution nowadays in Germany. You have at medical schools up to 80% of females. And they come and they afterwards, they come and have um, uh, hospitations and they are asking for um, dissertations. So this is a way to stimulate them. And I think it is an evolution and um, this will uh, bring as much um, um, parity in the end or balance in the system um, as anything else. This is what I believe in. Okay, we have here a question that came from Argentina. Ramiro Del Valle asked, have any of you have ever found any discrimination for patients preferring a male neurosurgeon? Uh, not really. Uh, when I was a young uh, neurosurgeon, when I arrived back from France, I was in the uh, on call. Uh, it was a drunk man. And uh, it was three patients we need to operate. And uh, he was a little bit better than others. And he told me, I want to be operate uh, for a woman. I will wait for a doctor. And I tell him, tell him, thanks for facilitate my life because I have three to operate. You will be the last, hope you're still alive because you can die on between, but does, doesn't worry. Everything will be fine. You facilitate my choice. I have two surgery to, be, be, to do before you. If you feel comfortable, he always prayed to me, but uh, everything was fine at the end. But can happen. We have some stories, but I think less and less, I think. Um, we did not, oh, I did not experience something like this. They only asked me, oh, you are that young. <laughs> what about your experience? <laughs> but not about uh, being female. But it was an experience in the operating room when uh, our resident who was uh, my helper in the private hospital in Sao Paulo, I had just start. I was in the operating room, the patient was on my name. I was in the operating room and the nurse asked me uh, when the doctor will came. And uh, I say quiet, I am the doctor, but okay. When the resident come in, uh, it was maybe 20 years younger and was in the operating room and she start to talk with him like a boss. I, I'm just wait and uh, uh, have fun with, I, I don't took seriously. I think that people shows more things that they have inside themselves than against us. Yeah, probably the world is changing um, differently in different spots. So uh, we, have, uh, we have had so many nights where we were standing laughing in the OR in emergency situations where we were two women uh, surgeons. Um, there was an uh, anesthetist uh, female and all the nurses were male. So all the doctors were female and all the nurses were male. And we said, well, this is, uh, this is the new times. <laughs> <laughs> the new scenario is different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, on the changing room, when I started working in Sao Paulo two decades ago, we had two options, doctors and nurses. Uh, there is not women and men uh, oh, no. changing rooms <laughs> so we, we, this has i think europe was already uh, done with all this stuff when i started uh, more than one generation before so probably 
probably we should uh, we should uh, perceive the whole issue as a, a pandemic issue. So we should infect everyone with our idea. <laughs> Well, we have some comments here from Christina Shawrish that said that uh, pediatric women neurosurgery, uh, life, pediatric neurosurgical women had to be proud of it despite the challenges. She congratulates to all women who perceive who pursue their dreams. And Vanessa Kravosli said she believed the point is to help each other, women and men, who succeed and already support and made possible or made the possible for the other. Any other comment? Sandeep, do we do we have some some more time? Or do you think it's time to to close the session? It depends, unless uh, there is something else the speakers or the moderators want to say. Graciela, do you want to add something? No, no, it's okay. Great. Thanks for the great opportunity. Fantastic so, discussion. I learned a lot. And Martina doesn't know, but he inspired me. I, I got uh, the child uh, later on. And when uh, she was with small babies in Verona, I think it was 1998, 99, she was uh, in the last uh, place with the kids in the arms and uh, he was feeding and he raised hands and talking at the same time. I think it's, oh gosh, there is really a different time running out. Fantastic, you, are, you inspire me, Martina. <laughs> okay, one, some closing comments before I pass to Sandy to, to end the session. I would like to congratulate with the with the archetypes <laughs> of Artemis. <laughs> and remember, <laughs> that's not my personal feeling, but when wondering about my my my, my mind, about mythology, I remember that sometimes. Zeus had a terrible headache and asked Hephaestus to open his head to see what was going on. And then suddenly Pallas Athena popped out and she became the most important of the goddesses, the classic goddesses. So it's said that ever, ever since that, Woman has been a constant cause of headache in men. <laughs> yes. Hopefully uh, not. <laughs> okay, I, it was a pleasure to moderate the session. I pass the the word to Graciela to her final comments, and then return to Sandy. When I congratulate both Titans because they both were wonderful, very nice, very intelligent. And of course, I agree to you, Francisco, for the presentation, and Sandeep and Nelsie for the invitation. Thank you very much. And we see you in the next episode, episode 11. <laughs> Thank, thank you very much. So it only remains for me to thank uh, the speakers. I actually thought that all this debate about men and women in different disciplines of neurosurgery or indeed life came to an end on 14th April 2003. You may not know, but that was the date 
that the World Genome Project was completed and presented to the world. And what it stated unequivocally was that men and women differ in one chromosome, which we knew, the Y chromosome. And this genome project showed us that the Y chromosome was in fact one third the size of the X chromosome. And the fact that men thought they were superior on basis of the Y chromosome came to a crashing halt when it was shown that the X chromosome has 900 genes. The Y chromosome has 55. I won't say any more and I do not have the liberty to make uh, the comments that our president has the liberty to make. But I will say that it has been a fantastic debate. I have one uh, point to make against both the speakers. And that was, I wish you stopped saying 35 years ago and 30 years ago, because all this time I thought both of you were in your early 30s. <laughs> <laughs> And thank you very it's much. <laughs> so humble, thank you. <laughs> Francisco and Graciela for very, very kindly agreeing to moderate this debate. Normally, we end by telling you about the next clash of the titans. Well, the next clash of the titans, number 11, will not occur on the scheduled date, which is the first Friday in November, because instead, between the 6th and 8th of November, we will have the virtual meeting of the ISPN, which we will call the ISPN 2020, which will highlight cutting edge science in pediatric neurosurgery. Registrations are open. The meeting on all three days starts at 1 p.m. Central European time and is likely to last for about four hours on each day. So please register yourself for the meeting. The next clash of the Titans therefore gets postponed to the third Friday, November, and we will meet on the 20th of November for the next clash of the Titans. The topic, I will keep you in suspense. <laughs> we have the virtual meeting. Good morning, good afternoon or evening, wherever you are in the world. It's great to have you as an audience. Thank you and goodbye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.